So basically what we do here is we have a morning practice together or it might be evening by you. I know there's a couple people who watch in from Switzerland <laughs> and um, Austria and I know it's like 6 p.m. for you guys over there by the time class starts so um, so what I should say is daily when we practice together. Um, my MLK day was great. I got to see two of my best friends that I hadn't seen since October. The three of us did your yoga session together. How was yours? Oh, that's so awesome. I'm so glad. I, I, uh, I feel so honored. This week people keep telling me they've been sharing class with other people in their lives, with friends in their lives. So thank you for trusting me with your friends. Um, and people bringing their moms. I'm like, thank you for trusting me with your moms. Um, so yeah, that's a huge compliment. And uh, it's so nice to get get together with friends. I've definitely been missing um, been missing friends um, and get togethers. And yeah, just being out here in California, not really having that um, big of a community out here. And then yeah, because I guess like the people that I do know out here, I'm not like close enough with them that I would want to like break pandemic rules with them versus back. On the East Coast, people I've known my whole life or known for the last five, six years, I'm like, yeah, like I trust you to be in my pod kind of thing. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, mine was good. I mean, probably I was like teaching yoga and then the rest of the day we kind of just organized and whatnot. And got, I got worked on I still treated it like a normal Monday, but I like Mondays, so it's all right. So what we do here in class is we, it's about a 75 minute class. So you're welcome to hop in or hop out when it feels good to you. And we start with a 10 minute grounding meditation. It's a little bit less, like seven, seven to 10 minutes. And then we move into about a 50 minute, five oh, uh, movement, uh, movement practice, asana practice. And today's gonna be pretty gentle, pretty restorative, slow flow. Um, I'll start picking things up again tomorrow, but the last couple days I've just been feeling like the energy is kind of, um, I don't know, my energy is kind of low, so I'm just trying to like respect that. And you know, if you're in alignment with that cycle, <laughs> um, then more power to you. Right? Like let's let's do this together. And if you're looking for something more challenging, then and you know you have a like, more advanced practice and you know throw in some handstands and chaturangas but we're gonna keep it nice and slow nice and flowy good morning Kai welcome welcome glad you made it and um, following that uh, gentle slow flow restorative class we'll have a nice long shavasana which is a guided meditation reclining on your back that's comfortable and I'll lead you right through it. Can't stay, I need to work, but I wanted to say hi. Have a great class, see y'all tomorrow. All right, sounds good. Good luck getting to work. Thanks for come, uh, dropping in and saying hi, appreciate you. If you wanted to stay for the grounding meditation, we're starting right now. So if you need a center before getting to work, you're welcome to do that. No pressure, no pressure. All right, cool. So everything that I lead you through is an invitation it's not a dance class, it's not a dance routine, it doesn't have to look any type of way. Truly, what works best for your body is gonna be the right way of doing it. Don't get hung up on the right way, or you should know how to do this, or you should be able to do this. Just absolutely listen to your body first. Okay. And we'll start seated. That can be on the ground, cross-legged, or in a chair. That works just fine too. Head over heart, heart over hips. Eyes can close if that's comfortable, or lower to a soft gaze just beyond your feet. Hands come to rest on the lap, either palms down to ground down, or palms up to give and receive energy if you feel you've got a little extra to give today. And we'll start with three cleansing breaths, in through the nose, out through the mouth. On the inhale, shoulders rise up towards the ears. On the exhale, shoulders drop away with an audible sigh.
just returning to a natural pace in the breath in and out through the nose if that's available. And we'll just take a moment here to arrive. Let go of everything that came before and everything that's to come up after. And just become present to yourself here in this space. Allowing sounds into your awareness. Perhaps the sound of birds singing outside the window or passing traffic. Might be the sound of a roommate or a pet shuffling or snoring. Allowing it all in, all part of this moment, this experience. Notice the temperature of the air on your skin. And the weight where your body makes contact with the ground below you. The weight of your hands on your knees. And begin to scan your body from head down towards toes. Like passing through an x-ray machine. Scanning for any points of tension or sensitivity. any restlessness or fidgeting. I'm just taking note to work into those places that call out for your attention throughout our practice here today. We'll shift the awareness from Anamaya Kosha, the body, to Pranamaya Kosha, energy. Notice on a scale of 1 to 10 where you're at. 1 being exhausted, fatigued, ready to crawl back into bed. And 10 being so full of energy, it's hard to sit still. Where are you in this moment? And notice the breath here, observing it. No need to change. Just watching inhalations, exhalations, and any space in between. We shift the awareness up to the mind, mano maya kosha, allowing thoughts and feelings to arise without engaging with them. Just let the mind wander, observing from a distance like an image being projected onto the wall.
and notice what are the quality of the thoughts today. Do they have a positive or a negative tilt to them? Are they holding on and ruminating in the past or attempting to predict the future? Not right or wrong, not good or bad, just something to notice. Notice yourself witnessing your thoughts. If you're observing it, you are not them. We can observe our body, our breath, our thoughts, our energy. More something behind that, the man behind the curtain. Though those elements are parts of us, we are not solely any one of them. Let your attention return down to the breath. This time actively expanding the breath. Every inhale sips in a little more air. And every exhale lets something more go. Inhale fills belly like a balloon expanding. Exhales draw belly button in towards spine deflating. Inhale fills belly and rib cage with air, ribs expanding out to the sides. Exhale releases ribs, then belly. Inhale, fills belly, ribs expand, and chest rises. Air all the way up to the collarbones. Exhale, releases chest, ribs, belly. Inhaling like this, bottom to top. Exhaling top to bottom. at your own breath pace, attempting to lengthen the breath, slow it down, and deepen it. This three-part breath, Dirga Pranayam, helps shift the nervous system out of sympathetic fight or flight into parasympathetic, rest and digest. It helps us build a relationship with the breath so that we can work in collaboration. On your next exhale, release any effort from the breath, just allowing the Breath to return to a natural pace. Hands come to meet at heart center, palms pressed together in Anjali Mudra, no space between the fingers, and the thumbs are pressed into the sternum. And here, consider setting an intention or a dedication for your practice. It can be the intention, the sankalpa you've been working with all year, or something new might inspire you today. And we'll seal that intention with the sound of Om, first a cleansing breath.
Allow your hands to release down to your lap. Chin drops towards chest. And then inhale, right ear rolls over towards right shoulder. Exhaling, chin to chest. Left ear rolls towards left shoulder. And just allowing the head to roll like this, side to side. Opening up the space between shoulder and ear. Next time, head rolls through center. Bring it up to neutral. Begin to roll the shoulders forward. Just working into space in the upper back. No wrong way of doing this. Your eyes might even still be closed. Roll the shoulders back. Stillness in the shoulders, but inhale, arms sweep up overhead. And exhale, bend over to the right. Left arm reaches over for a side bend. Inhale, up through center. And exhale, over to the left. Just following the breath like this, up through center and out to bend. Opening up the side body with a lateral bend. We've got once more to each side. Next time we're up through center, we'll take an exhale, twist to the right. Left hand lands on top of right knee, right shoulder pulls back, chest opening towards side wall. Inhale back up through center. Exhale, twisting left. So it's not the deepest twist of your life. We're just waking the body up to that motion. Exhale, it's like wringing out a sponge. We twist. Inhales, untwist. Bring it back up through your center. And once more to the left. Nice, bring the arms up, elbows come down, hands by the ears, just give it a wave, warming up the hands. I'm playing piano, just the hands drop down, elbows don't move, just the hands move, fingers wiggling side to side. all those clicks and cracks out. Palms flip, hands are pressed back as far as they can go, fingers spread wide. Once again, elbows are staying in place. It's just the hands that are moving full range of motion. Fingers pressed back as hard as they can using just that hand strength. And it should feel like fatiguing for the forearms. That's how you know you're doing it right. I'm going fully clockwise, fully counterclockwise. Both hands. All the effort is in bringing the fingers back. And shake off water. Two, three, two, one. All right. We'll extend the legs out in front. Dog in the way. Extend the legs out in front. Spread and scrunch the toes. Roll out the ankles, just waking up the lower legs here. Change direction of the roll. And 
then bend in the knees, feet come nice and wide. We'll just drop the knees side to side. They're far enough away, the feet are far enough away that the knees don't land stacked on top of the other foot. So just waking up the hips here, nice and gentle. And then we'll cross the legs, bring the feet in. Okay, Lucy, you're right, right where I need to be sitting, honey. How about? Yeah, you're just right in the middle. All right. <laughs> so, with the legs in front. All right. We'll bring the right foot out in front. Perfect. You're perfect. Okay. Right leg comes out in front. Make a fist with your left hand. And here, we'll work from the heel all the way up towards the toe ball mound, working into all of that fascia, that connective tissue in the bottom of your foot. And we're rocking, so I'm, I'm not using my arm strength, I'm using my whole body weight, drop forward and back, kind of working into the hips as well. Um, just bringing some movement there. And I'm just using that weight to give my foot a bit of a massage, like really working into the bottom of the foot, warming up all of those muscles. I've had multiple people with plantar fasciitis um, in my class, so, so this is, um, this helps. <laughs> this helps. Keep rocking back and forth. Then, We're gonna take the hand and interlace the fingers with the toes. So take your pinky and place it in between the little pinky toe and the first little toe. Then ring finger next, middle finger next, finally the index finger. You'll know you did it right because your index finger lands between your big toe and your first little toe. And I'm pushing my hand in as far as it'll go until the webbing of my hand and the webbing of my feet are connecting or as close to it as you can get. So that's a nice good grip. The right arm comes underneath the leg at any point just to lift it. And then using just my arm strength, like just my, like my foot is completely relaxed, I'm just ro rotating the ankle here. Change directions. Nice. And then coming to stillness in the center, I'm going to squeeze my foot with my fingers as hard as I can. So my hand is squeezing, squeezing, squeezing tight. And then release the squeeze from the hand, squeeze the fingers with the toes. So scrunch with the toes. It would be kind of weird if you don't, I don't know, do stuff with your feet all the time. We're crushing the hand with the toes. It's uncomfortable. If it's uncomfortable, you're probably doing it right. Release the grip from the toes, squeeze with the hand, and it can even feel kind of painful if you are somebody who like wears shoes all day for decades and decades and decades. Um, but here we are in new times, and most of us are home. If you, um, you know, we walk around barefoot a lot more, this is like your feet are probably a lot happier. Or maybe they're stressed out because they don't have like the support from the shoes that you're used to wearing. All right, switch it. Toes are squeezing hand. Um, which is like not a judgment, it's just something to notice, right? So without shoes, our feet have to develop different muscles to balance our bodies. Um, so this kind of undoes, undoes all the shoe wearing in a good way. All right, last thing, last torture bit here in this uh, is, um, foot exercise. We're squeezing the foot with the hand. We're squeezing the hand with the foot. So both are squeezing at the same time. We're spreading all of these 
of bones and ligaments and tendons inside. So it can feel really uncomfortable, really intense. It should, you're squeezing as hard as you can. Keep breathing for three, two, one. And then just unlace. Give it a little shake out. Nice. All right, while we're here, let's take advantage of the positioning. Hand comes to, so left hand comes to right foot. Right arm comes to the outside. And then if you still got space here, you might bring the foot to the forearm or inside the elbow. If you can bring it to inside the elbow, the foot's pressed against the, like the bicep. Grab onto the leg, grab onto each hand. Or you can have a hand on either of these locations and still get the benefit. I'm giving myself a little rock side to side. It's called rock the baby pose. I'm trying to stay nice and seated up tall. So my chest is still over my hips. I'm not rounding forward to make this happen. I'm bringing my leg up to meet me up tall so that I can keep a nice straight spine while rocking the baby. Foot stays flexed, pressed into the, into the arm. Hi. All right, if you find like a sticky spot, like a spot where you're like, there's like an edge there, just give it a breath there. And then we'll release, Ugh. let the leg out, give it a shake. I like just like shaking it with my hand, like that feels really good. Just like letting it jiggle, just wait. There's so much, so much shaking, so much shaking in class. If you're new here, We'll see what what I mean. All right, that leg comes in. Now the left foot is in front. Right hand makes a fist. I'm using the knuckles of my hand to press into the bottom of my feet, all the way from the heel up towards the toes. Back and forth, back and forth. I'm not using my arm strength. I'm using the weight of my body. So I'm leaning forward. So there's no bend in the elbow or the shoulder. So my hips that are hinging forward and back for the pressure necessary to begin to work into the bottom of that foot. And our feet do a lot for us all day. Um, standing and walking and all of that. They like support our entire weight. So we're showing them some love today. All right. Now we'll interlace the fingers with the toes. So pinky slips in between the pinky toe and the first little toe. Ring finger in between the next two, middle finger into the next two. You'll know you've done it right because your index finger has landed between big toe and first little toe. Then scooch the webbing of the hand and the webbing of the toes and together until they're touching or close to it, as close to it as you can get. It is uncomfortable until it's not. It's gonna be painful until it's uncomfortable. It's gonna be uncomfortable until it's not. So eventually you'll, you know, keep working at it. You'll get used to it. The left hand comes below the leg, just holding it up in place. Using just the hand strength, we're just rotating the foot. Right, so what are we doing here in yoga, right? Like, okay, big picture, it's yoking of the mind and body. Okay, sure. Also, we're practicing being uncomfortable. It's a daily practice in discomfort, in pushing ourselves and knowing that we'll still survive in the end. And what, how do you respond to un uncomfortable situations of discomfort, right? Like you can test that out with your family at the dinner table or you can test that out on a yoga mat. All right, change directions of the foot. Right? You can test that out protesting on the streets or you can test that out on a yoga mat. And the nice thing about here is like a safe, it's, you know, it's literally a safe space. It's just like you and your screen, not even I can see you. So if you're cursing or pulling your hair out or like throwing things, like. There's literally no judgment because nobody knows you're doing it except you. And that's just something notice. Like, all right, well, that's how I, you know, respond to discomfort. I throw things and curse and yell. Or maybe I stop. Maybe I quit. 
okay? All right, coming to stillness here, squeezing the foot with my fingers. So I'm giving the foot a nice deep squeeze, then I'm gonna switch. Toes are squeezing the fingers. So we're just noticing, how do we react to discomfort? How do we react to being uncomfortable? What defense mechanisms show up? I change it over, now my hand is squeezing my foot. Um, and all the answers are good answers. Like it's good information, it's intel. We're like recon our own internal selves and our reactions and responses to the world around us by putting our own selves in these uncomfortable situations. All right, switch it back, but squeezing the hand. It's all great, there's no good or bad, better or worse. It's just like, okay, this is what it is. Do I want to continue reacting this way or do I want to practice reacting in a different way? And if you are practicing reacting in a different way, you know, how do you do that? We'll practice it here. All right, release that. And then we have fingers squeezing foot, foot squeezing fingers. So both are actively squeezing into one another. Don't hold your breath here. That's definitely the temptation is to hold your breath. And we're like giving full out, but the breath ends, the pose ends. So let's keep breathing fully here. Squeezing tight, tight, tight for three, two, one. Whew. Okay, we're releasing all the fingers. Give the foot a little shake out. And then we're coming into rock the baby pose. So I try to bring my foot to the inside of the forearm, bring the other arm around. It's okay also to have, you know, half or the hand or the knee in the hand, foot in the hand. Still seated up nice and tall. I'm giving myself a rock side to side, working into this outer hip. This is where I feel it. You might feel it in the hamstring or somewhere else, but really you want to feel it in this left leg. And you might find a sticking point somewhere along that trajectory. We're just going to give it a deep breath there. Bring it back to the middle. Extend the leg out, give the leg a nice shake. Okay, beautiful. So then from here, I'm gonna get a sip of water. I'm really thirsty today. If you guys need a sip of water at any point in class ever, don't need my permission on a Bikram class. You are still kind of in my way, but we're gonna make it work. Well, maybe you can just. There you go. Okay. We'll just give Lucy the yoga mat today. Okay, so from here, we're gonna bring our feet together. Um, nope, that's not what I wanna do. We're gonna give ourselves a roll back. So we're just gonna come into reclining, give the knees a hug in, a little rock side to side. Drop the heels down to the ground and hands rest down by the sides, fingertips just grazing the heels. And give the hips a slight tuck so that the lower back is pressed into the ground. And just like we were practicing before with our breath, we're gonna inhale into the belly and the hips rise. We're peeling one vertebra at a time away from the ground. So hips, lower back, mid back, upper back, and then shoulders are the last thing. Give them a little tuck in for a Setu Bandhasana or bridge pose. We're gonna come into rolling bridges here. Exhale releases one vertebra at a time. Not just is it lowering, but I let my hips kind of reach towards the wall in front of me to elongate. So my Spine is nice and long on the way down. Inhale, tucks the hips, presses them up towards the sky. Belly and chest follows. Exhale, releases shoulders, middle back, lower back, hips. 
I'm just continuing like this for a couple or two more breaths, two more rounds of breath. See if at the top of the inhale, you can go as high as you can. And how much control can you have on the way down, really just allowing one vertebra to touch down at a time to the best of your ability. Nice, when the hips touch down that last time, hug the knees in. You might grab the insides of your feet. So I'm just bringing, so my knees are in towards my chest and the feet go towards the sky, reaching it through. I just grab the insides of my feet and give it a rock side to side. It's called happy baby pose. So it's like I'm bringing my knees down to the ground, up to the sides. Feet are nice and wide and it's just a rock side to side. Might feel good to extend one leg and then the other. To make that happen, I kind of let the bent knee touch down, rolling that far. Yeah. So this is like a little free movement here, opening up the hips, stretching of the lower back. And then releasing, <clears throat> releasing the legs down, all the way down. We'll bring our elbows down by the sides and come up to, it's almost like you're sitting on the beach. Yeah. Elbows just below the shoulders and come into fish pose. So the toes point. What I'm going to try to do here is get my toes to touch the ground by lifting my hips. So that sounds kind of crazy, but like, so basically what's gonna happen is I'm pressing my hips up, pressing the heels of my feet into the ground so hard that my hips rise and my toes are pressing down towards the earth. Oh, hello, Swiss. Oh, thank you. Welcome, welcome, Raiders. Hello, hello. So here we are in fish pose, perfect time for a raid. Welcome in, welcome in. <laughs> so we're pressing through our heels, lifting the hips, stretching through the shoulders. Welcome in, fish pose. Okay, here we are. <laughs> Another deep breath here. We'll gently release the hips down to the ground, press the hands into the ground to come up to seated. Hello, welcome, welcome. Oh, you beautiful raiders, okay. Happy Tuesday, welcome to yoga. We're doing a nice uh, gentle class. I mean, I guess fish pose is, isn't the most gentle pose, but I was feeling it. So here we are in staff pose, seated up like the letter L. I bring my heels forward a bit, just dragging my hips to bring any like smushy goodness to the back. Where did you guys come from? What class did you just come from? What uh, Or what stream did you just come from? What were you all up to today? And we're flexing through the heels so hard that the backs of the knees are pressing towards the ground. There's still space back there. Maybe there isn't for you if you're hyper flexible. You know, you can probably get the backs of your knees to the ground, but that's, we're not pushing down to make that happen or anything like that. Run meditate with me. Ah, oh, just come from a nice meditation class. That sounds amazing. With a deep breath in, we're nice and tall in the spine. We're hinging forward, trying to keep the back kind of a raid train. I love it. Um, so we're hinging forward with as flat a back as you can. That might just be a degree or two, but that might just be trying to sit up straight and that's fine. When you get to the point where you couldn't go any further without rounding the back, we take a deep breath in and exhaling belly, chest, head can round forward. So we're not trying to get the forehead to the knees or anything like that. It's more of a nose to toes type movement. Awesome, welcome in, thank you, thank you. So I'm pressing through the heels, the backs of my legs are pressing into the ground. It's okay if your knees are more bent than mine, right? Like 
you do what's best for your body. We're not pushing down. The whole idea is to stretch out the backs of the legs. We're not forcing anything. There's no shape we're necessarily going for. We're just focusing on the alignment here. Paschimottanasana, head to feet pose. So your head can be looking down. If this is hurting your neck, the nose to toes part, because we're scrunching the cervical spine, just let the head um, relax. So it's halfway, so it's like the top, so the head, top of the head is trying to touch the, the toes instead of the nose. And by elongating that part of the spine, you'll relieve a lot of cervical pressure. So we just got one more deep breath here. And then you can press the hands into the ground to come back up to seated. Dandasana. Beautiful. Okay. Taking, let's do, yes. So we're going to turn on to hands and knees. I had a yoga mat, but I don't know if you guys can see in the shadows, but there's a beast. There's a beast on it, so no yoga mat for the human today. That's okay. She's the best of us anyway, isn't she? This is Lucy. Okay. So here we are, tabletop. Hands under shoulders, knees below hips. And inhale, we go through our cow pose. And exhale through your cat. Just a couple of rounds like this, matching the speed of your body to the length of your breath. And slowing the breath down. so that you can slow the body down. And this next time you exhale through cat pose, rounding in spine, chin tucking in towards chest. We'll be your last, allow it to return to a neutral pace. We'll take a step up with the right foot, I step up with the left foot, allow the feet to come nice and wide, maybe even to the edges of your mat, or wider than shoulder distance. And then here, the legs are pretty warmed up, so we're just going to look ahead, nod yes, allowing the knees to be a little or a lot bent, but some bend in them for sure. Shake the head now. You can grab opposite elbows to create a frame for your head for ragdoll. Giving yourself a rock side to side. So free movement, no wrong way of doing this. Second major forward fold of class. So it might feel different than how we usually do it where this is our first major forward fold. Just see if anything else feels opened up to you after that seated forward fold that we just practiced together. We'll bring it back to center. Release the arms, bend in the knees. Heel toe the feet together till the big toes touch. And we're rolling it all the way up to stand. Arms sweep up when you get there. And arms release down by the sides. So we came just in time for our lymphatic shake part of class. So just roll with it. Just trust that your body will know what to do. This is going to be a huge stress relief for your body, for your mind, for your soul. <laughs> so we start by just giving it a hop. Let the shoulders rise and drop. Shake out the hands. The shoulders rise and drop, rise and drop. So you can give it a jump if you have the space and the want. Or just lifting the heels and letting the heels drop down, landing with soft knees and letting that jiggle reverberate. So we're trying to get like as much jiggling and shaking as possible. So you can even speed it up a little bit to make that happen. 
This is going to be the liveliest part of the class, and then we're going to bring it back down. Gentle, restorative. So here we are, shaking, 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 giving that bounce. You can start breathing in and out through the mouth. That might be more comfortable for you. <sighs> Any audible sighs are highly encouraged now and at all times during class. So just letting the heat kind of build up because we've been staying pretty low energy, pretty low to the ground, all practice. So here we're building it up, building it up. And we're going to come into our four part breath, our breath of joy. So what that looks like is three sips of air in and one big ha, like you're yelling, out. It looks like this. Sip of air in, so it's like 30% of your lung capacity in, arms sweep up, 33% of your arm of your lung capacity in, arms sweep out and up. The rest of your lung capacity in as the arms sweep forward, and then a big ha as the arms sweep back, belly towards sides. So they don't have to touch. It's just like down and back. And there's no exhales in between the inhales, so it's just in. In, in, ha. Right. So we've got ten of those. In, 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 ha. In, 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 ha. Ha. More than halfway, if you haven't joined in, now's your chance. Okay, standing with your feet nice and wide, shoulder distance, hand comes to the belly, hand comes to the heart, eyes can close, and just notice here what has shown up for you. Body temperature might rise, heart rate, breath, but what else shows up? took the snow globe that is the container of your body and gave it a righteous shape. Just take a moment here to observe where the glitter dust falls. Whatever shows up, not right, not wrong, not good, not bad, just something to notice. We'll gently blink the eyes open. And the hands come down by the sides. You walk to the end of your mat. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, hands on shins. And exhale, bend in the knees deep, deep, so deep that we come down to seated. However, it's best for you to come down, back down to the ground. Beautiful. And just take the you can be turned whichever way works for you. I just keep turning around so that you can actually see like what I'm what I'm doing here. Big toes come to touch, knees splay far apart. We're coming into child's pose, so just let the belly, chest, head come down towards the ground. The head, the forehead, if it touches the ground, you can give it a little rock side to side. Hips are touching down towards the heels. 
palms of the hands press into the ground so hard that the elbows stay a little lifted, giving the shoulders and the side, the side body a bit of a stretch. Varudasana, child's pose. And keeping the <clears throat> Left hip touch down towards the heel, whether or not it touches, it stays in the same position, pressing down and back. We walk the hands all the way over to the right. So my left hip is pressing down and back. My body is laterally bent to the right. For a little extra stretch in the shoulder, the left hand can come to land on top of the right hand. Walk the hands back through center and all the way over to the left. So my right hip is pressing down towards my right heel. My body stretching over to the left. Maybe the right hand comes to land on top of the left hand to give the shoulder an extra little stretch. Walking the hands back through center, we bring it all the way up to seated. Knees come together, toes tuck under, and I'm sitting back on the heels and giving the feet another stretch. So all the weight's going back onto the toes, we're continuing that loving up on our feet here. You can feel intense if you haven't sat like this before. Um, so my toes, it's hard to see with the shag, but my toes are tucked under. We're just here for a moment. Hands can come onto the um, thighs. Inhaling, arch the back. And just exhaling to neutral. Inhaling, arch, pulling the shoulder blades together like I'm holding a pencil between them. And exhale to neutral. Once more like that. Inhaling, opening up the front side body. And exhaling to neutral. All right, untuck the toes, stop torturing you. <laughs> and then we're going to come down onto the belly. Just nice and easy, no chaturangas today. Feeling, taking it easy today. And just because it's easy doesn't mean we can't go deep. So, elbows below the shoulders, just like we did before, but now we're body side down, tops of the feet pressing to the ground so hard that you feel the knees lift. So my knees are just off the ground. Okay? I'm squeeze my shoulder blades together and then press my hips into the ground. So I'm squeezing my glutes and the hips are pressing to the ground so hard that it's like I'm gluing this part to the ground. Then my elbows press into the earth, they pull down and back like I'm driving my chest forward. Not up, forward. But because my hips and thighs are glued down, I'm elongating that space on my lower ab abdominals, my lower abs, lower belly, the whole front side body. This is called Sphinx Pose. Right, like the riddle, the riddle keeper in those plays, those old plays. In Oedipus, I believe. The Sphinx is the one with the riddle. Right, so. Breathing here. Then we're pressing back to puppy pose. So bend in the knees, send the hips up. My hips go directly over my knees, no further. And then the chest comes down towards the ground, arms pressing forward. So the front of the body is almost like child's pose, but now the shoulders have this um, added pressure and stretch stretch on them from the height of the hips. This is called puppy pose. So this is similar to the stretch in downward facing dog, but without the legs up. So this is the stretch you should be feeling 
or you could be feeling on your shoulders in downward facing dog. Also, the head is neutral. I just had my head turned so I could talk to you guys. You don't feel a stretch in your shoulders. Press your arms into the ground even stronger while trying to get your chest to touch the floor. One more deep breath here. And then bring yourself back to neutral. Hands come underneath the shoulders. Feet, knees below the hips. Nice. And just bring your right knee all the way up to meet your right wrist. So I just slid my knee up to meet my right wrist. And I'm going to cross the ankle all the way as far as I can to the left towards this left wrist. I'm not going to get it to touch even though like I can. That's like not super hot for my knees. So I'm just going as far as I can without the help of this other hand to get my right foot towards my left side body. I'm going to heel toe the left foot back, 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 bringing my hips close to the ground and nice and square. So it's really tempting to bring it so far back that I'm just sit seated on my right butt cheek. But I'm avoiding that and bringing the left hip close to the ground and point the back toes and let the shoelace part of the feet touch the ground don't let it sickle in like a crescent moon just keep it straight back so we're stretching the top of the feet we're not over stretching the outside of the ankle which generally tends to be quite a bit weak so deep breath in here proud pigeon pose and exhaling just like yesterday just like all our forward folds, we exhale by lowering belly, chest, head. And come to land on stacked fists, a pillow, a block, the ground, somewhere where you don't feel like you're in a perpetual push-up. So the whole body is relaxed here. Really, you're gonna feel the stretch um, in the right hip and leg. So anywhere in the right leg that you're feeling it, is the intention that's what we want to be stretching out so if you feel any tension in your jaw in your shoulders in your upper back just let it go invite it to let it go every exhale is an opportunity to let go of something that does not serve you echo pada konasana pigeon pose here Press into the ground, coming back upright. And now press the right legs behind you. Let's we'll come into tabletop, but extend that same leg up and back, giving the am I there we go? Giving the toes, the foot a little um, rotation. You can bend in the knee, give the hip a bit of a rotation, just bring some movement back into that hip we just stretched out. And allow that knee to come down to the ground. Now we slide the left knee towards the left wrist. Using just the leg strength and flexibility, the left foot comes up towards the right wrist. Don't use your hand, because like if I use my hand, I can bring it all the way up. Right? Okay, great. I'm in the shape, but then I'm stuck here. So forget that. From here, just use the leg strength to bring the foot as far over to the right as you can without letting the knee move from the side of the left wrist. Then the right toes scooch back, back, back to bring the hips close to the ground. Remember, don't sit down on that right on that left butt cheek. Instead, keep the hips nice and square. So I'm trying to get the front of my right thigh to the ground. My left hip's already on the ground. I lose. Pointing through the right toes, I'm pressing the shoelace part of the foot down into the ground. 
walking the hands back for a nice pigeon pose, so proud pigeon pose. Shoulder blades are squeezed together. So basically teach forward fold the same no matter what position the rest of the body is in. And it always starts with a really dramatic back bend. So like let yourself be full like theater kid in high school wanting the the, the part, the lead part, and just let your chest shine forward, shoulder blades pulled together. It's a deep breath in, dramatic. Exhale, rolls you forward. Belly, chest, head. Coming to land on stacked fists, on a pillow, on a block, on the ground, for your folded pigeon pose. So forever and ever, never hold back in this class, especially like nobody can see you. It's just you and yourself. Just ask yourself if you're holding back from being dramatic before your forward folds, if you're holding back from being dramatic on your, on your uh, back bends or your sides, your breaths of joy, like what's holding you back? Like if embarrassment is what sh is showing up for you, if shame is what's showing up for you, you know, um, okay, just like notice that. Just like notice, be like, okay, like, what am I ashamed about here? What am I embarrassed about? What is holding me back? What am I afraid that maybe I'll think about myself? It's okay, to, like I'm inviting you to be silly. That's uncomfortable for a lot of people. I'm just breathing here, letting the whole right leg relax, stretch. Letting the whole body relax, really, that right leg is stretching. We'll press our hands into the ground, coming up to a seated position, or not seated position, coming up to our proud pigeon pose position. Palms press into the ground, and the left leg comes back for our tabletop pose. Then left leg, there we go, left leg reaches all the way back, roll out the ankles, bring some movement back into the foot, give our feet a lot of love today. Bend in the knee, give the hip a circle. Change directions. And releasing that knee down to the ground. We'll come to reclining. I don't really want to do this. Well, no, we'll leave it the way it is. Legs come out in front. So, well, I didn't ask us to bring any props today, so let's not do that. Knee hu knees hug in towards the chest. We'll rock side to side. And then both knees fall over to the right. Left arm opens up like the letter T. You can look over the left fingertips and we're just bringing the left shoulder down to the ground. So I'm actively pressing the shoulder into the ground. Everything else is totally relaxed. So I'm just letting gravity do the work. Right hand lands on top of right knee, or left knee. But I'm not even pulling down, I'm just letting the whole body be relaxed. It doesn't matter if the knees touch the ground, it doesn't matter if the knees touch one another. We're just pressing the left shoulder into the earth. That's the only effort here. Supta Matsyandrasana, supine spinal twist. And head comes up through center, knees come up through center. And allow the knees to roll over to the left side. Left hand lands on top of the right knee. Right arm opens up like the letter T. I'm pressing my right shoulder towards the ground. Otherwise, the whole body is relaxed, neutral. Just letting gravity do the work. Every exhale softens another part of your body. Maybe the head looks over the right arm to give a neutral, uh, to give an even stretch to the neck.
And the head comes back up through center, knees come back up through center. And then just allow the feet to come down, feet touching. And then knees splay open to the sides, bound angle, like making a diamond shape. Bound angle pose, Baddha Konasana, or Supta Baddha Konasana, because we're laying down. So this might be really intense for the hips. Just give it a breath and notice, is it intense? And it's like immediate panic. And then it's just like, okay, nothing's gonna hurt me here. You can breathe through it. Or is it painful? Like, is there pinching? Or are you feeling like, if you're feeling like electricity in your lower back, then like, okay, let's not press into that. And instead you can place blankets, pillows, or blocks below your knees here. Also, you can bring your feet a little bit further or a little bit closer to your hips to uh, kind of like adjust the settings <laughs> to find what works for you. I'm just letting my, let's see, my knees are not, they're not touching the ground. There's not a goal to touch the ground. If they do touch the ground and it feels good for you, that's freaking amazing. If it's not touching the ground and it feels good for you, that's also amazing. There's no goal with this. There's no pose that we're trying to achieve. And then the arms go where best serves you. It might be up overhead, laying on the belly. If it's on the legs, it's just resting with gravity. We're not pushing down at this point or anything like that. Just letting ourselves breathe. And every exhale just relaxes you softly into the earth. Just notice, is there any last movement or wiggle or stretch that your body's asking for as we prepare for our Shavasana final relaxation pose? And just intuitively moving through that, whatever it might be. If you're ready for Shavasana, you can just extend your legs out right from where you are, letting the feet land at least a foot apart from one another. Legs so relaxed that the feet splay apart. Hands come to land at least six inches from the body, palms face open to the sky. If you're moving, if you're wiggling, it doesn't have to have a fancy yoga name. It could literally be anything at all. Just taking your time to move through that. And making whatever other preparations for Shavasana that call to you. That might be grabbing a blanket to put over your body, putting on socks as our body temperature does lower in this position, in this stillness. And I'm just coming up to seated so that I can play some Tibetan singing bowls for you, but you can stay laying down as you make your way into Shavasana. into Shavasana final relaxation pose, body face open to the sky, palms face open to the sky, a symbol, a mudra of receptivity. Allow yourself to receive the full benefits of your practice here today. Eyes can close if that's comfortable. And if not, a soft gaze to the ceiling is just fine. Not staring at anything in particular, just gently resting on the ceiling or the sky. And we'll start this meditation as we started our last with three cleansing breaths. In through the nose and an audible sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> 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 
allow the breathing to continue just through the nose if that's available. Inviting space between top and bottom teeth as the jaw hangs heavy. And the tongue falls away from the roof of the mouth. All the muscles of the face and the jaw relax. The muscles surrounding the nose and nostrils relax. As your exhalations become longer and deeper than your inhalations. Eyes rest heavy in their sockets. Eyelids just barely touching. And the space between the eyebrows broadens. All of the muscles in the forehead relax. Whole face and all the muscles surrounding the ears and the top and back of the head relax. The neck and throat release. Shoulders melt away. Upper arms and elbows. Forearms and wrists. And backs of the hands. Palms. Knuckles. Fingers, fingertips, fingernail beds. Whole hands alive with vibration, alive with creative potential. Rest and integrate all that you practice. upper back, middle and lower back, rest heavy, supported by the ground below you, chest naturally rises and falls, perhaps imperceptibly, belly naturally rises and falls with the breath. Glutes, pelvis, hips, all rest. Upper legs and knees, lower legs and ankles, relax. And the heels, tops of the feet, arches, toe ball mounds, and all of the toes, relax. Whole body resting. Whole body rest. Whole body rest. I'm going to lead you through a meta meditation, a loving kindness practice. To participate, just repeat the words that I say in your mind. If not, you can tune me out and just listen to the sound of the singing bowl.
may I be peaceful, safe, and loved. And bring to mind somebody that loves you dearly. May they be peaceful, safe, and loved. And bring to mind somebody that you love very dearly. It can be a person or a pet. May they be peaceful safe and loved. And bring to mind somebody neutral in your life, perhaps the cashier at the grocery store, the postman. May they be peaceful safe and loved. Bring to mind somebody that challenges you in some way, perhaps rubs you the wrong way. May they be peaceful, safe and loved. Bring to mind all beings, all beings, large and small. May they be peaceful, safe, and loved. Allow for everything that did and did not happen in class today. Know that in yoga, practice makes practice. Nothing more, nothing less. Gently invite your inhalations to deepen and become longer and deeper than your exhalations. And all that feeling of heaviness and sinking replaced with the feeling of openness and expansion, a lifting towards the front side body as fingers and toes begin to wiggle. Head gently rock side side and arms sweep up overhead for a full body stretch let the knees bend and roll over to whichever side feels natural landing in a fetal position Fully released, fully relaxed, fully supported by the ground below you. You can use one arm as a pillow. And bring to mind any intention or dedication you set for class today or take this opportunity to set one now. If that intention inspires you, take it with you off the mat and into the world. Allow it to affect you and the people around you for the rest of your day. With eyes still closed or gently lowered, press your hands into the ground using as little effort as possible to meet back up at seated, just like where we started class. Hands come to meet at heart center, Anjali Mudra today. 
we worked on a number of uh, restorative heart opening postures. So we did a lot of front front body opening opening poses as well as working into our feet. The first namaste said silently to yourself, thanking your body for the effort it put into class. And the second namaste said out loud to all those that held this space, namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who joined me today in my morning practice, perhaps your morning practice. I appreciate you all and I hope you found something that serves you, something that that, um, that brings benefit and positivity, maybe a little space or sanity to your day. Namaste, I love you, Glassy. I love you, Momo, so much. Namaste, Swiss, so good to see you back here. I'm sure that the raid had much to do with you, my friend. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm definitely gonna have to check out Meditate With Me. I mean, just from the name, I can already tell we're gonna get along just fine. <laughs> How's everyone feeling post-class? Yes, yes, of course, yes. Oh my gratitude to you, of course. Of course, of course. How's everyone feeling? So yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's definitely not yin yoga, but I'm just trying to keep it low, close to the ground, some deep stretches, keep the pace low. I don't really feel like breaking a sweat today, um, you know, and, and we often do in class. Um, or I shouldn't speak for you, but I often do in class. So I just want to take it easy at the beginning of this week, um, at least through tomorrow. Tomorrow is also going to be another slow flow gentle kind of class. I might have Ian class prepared, but I have to prepare beforehand for Ian yoga. I don't know how it works with live streaming either, because I can't like walk around and give massages, which is like what my Ian classes were before. So, um, yeah, I'm just keeping it open and see what happens. Um, just want to have like a chill space option for people to show up to. <laughs> 